Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I had a slightly shorter stream than normal uh, th this week, um, partly because, well, I missed the original slot for my stream because I was busy, and then so I ended up moving it to Thursday, uh, when, uh, let's just say I wasn't feeling very well, I'm, I'm still, still fighting off a bit of Covid, so I didn't get quite as much done as I normally do. However, there's still a fair amount to talk about over here on non Trellos, where I've been doing some... Um, where I had, let's just say I had some interesting times with the other uh, biters. So there've been, there are a number, still quite a few biter nests scattered around the map, as you can see from the from the radar here. Um, and the pollution cloud is not exactly small, and there are a few places where the biters are still invest, are still getting uh, increased by. It. They're they're spreading out back into the pollution cloud, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So. That meant I kept having sort of some relatively small attacks, but because there weren't any defences here at the time, those attacks were quite destructive. So the biters would typically get in. For some reason, they'd always get into the middle here and then destroy some inserters and some belts and some pipes, but not so much the machines. And they didn't take out the uh, the massive mining drills, which is where I would assume most of the pollution is coming from. Um, 200 per minute, in fact, from those. Versus only four a minute from these. So it's a bit of a surprise... Oh, yeah, um, so it's a bit of a surprise. That it was, it was um, that, they, that these were the things that were getting attacked. But that's that's what happened. So I, I kept, I, I came after coming out here the second time in, in order to deal with them and having used the um, the uh, what do we call it, the energy beams in glaive mode to, to zap a few biters that were um, attacking things they shouldn't have been. I decided that enough was enough. I was going to come in and actually defend the place properly. So I slapped down blueprints for. Um, all of these turrets round here. These these are just simply laser turrets because I know I'm going to have plenty of power available because I've got this full gigawatt of power available here, um, potentially from the from the um, thermal generator, uh, from the beam generator. Sorry, and that is, and we're only using about 40% of that in normal use. So the other 600 megawatts can be used, and and these these things use what. Um, <clears throat> Four, up to four megawatts each. So I've got six. If I've got 600 megawatts available, that's like 100, 150 laser ter laser turrets at once that can be firing. I don't think we're going to get that sort of level of biter attacks. It's not that biter a planet. At least, certainly isn't at the moment. And I think I've still probably got. Yes, I've still got the energy glaive down here, trundling around, finding biters to destroy. And the energy glaive it, or the energy beam is extremely effective at taking out biters, um, as you can see how quickly it took those worms out. Um, and it will then automatically track off and find another set of biters to attack, and then another and another and so on. The only problem is it's not very smart about which ones it does, uh, which ones it attacks. I'm not sure what logic system it uses to decide which ones to go for next, but it's clearly not the nearest ones, because as you can see from here, but it's going over to this nest rather than attacking this one down here. It's also not doing the ones that are closest to the stuff I, I care about because there's these ones up here, which would be it'd be much nicer if it would attack these ones first because these ones are actually a danger to my base. So, yeah, there's probably some lot. Well, there must be some sort of logic and system behind how it chooses what to attack, but I have absolutely no idea what it is. But I sort of forgive it because it's it is extremely effective, as you can see, it's burning through these biters with no problems whatsoever. So, given enough time, it will eventually wipe out all of the biters on this planet, I think. Um, or at least all the biters on the explored parts of the planet. So, it, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy to leave this just, just running around on its own, now that I've got the actual um, defences around, around, the, around the base over here. Now, yes, there's a lot of this that hasn't been built up yet. The spaceship that's flying out here, I have. I've, if I find the, um, the Trellos chunk ship, which is this one... I've put on the ship. I've put in this um, green uh, green chest here, which is requesting lots of the different bits and pieces that are needed to keep that uh, in order to build up the the, uh, the outpost and to repair any damage that gets done to it as well. So the main thing is we've got loads and loads of turrets, loads of stone wall being requested. <clears throat> the turrets are mostly fine. They're getting picked up from the space station, I think, while the ship's um, refueling. The wall. It unloaded so quickly on Norvis the first time that it didn't, didn't actually pick any of that up. But I'm hoping that the robots will have brought some wall a bit closer. And now it'll be ready and will be dumped in much more quickly the next time. But we'll see how that goes. To be honest, it's not going to be the end of the world. If we don't have the wall of wall, then the wall of lasers will probably be sufficient. And these are getting brought out. So it does seem to be working okay. 
this ship, as I think I said in the previous episode, is kind of working in the opposite way to most of my other um, chunk ships. Normally they'll fly out to wherever they're getting the chunks from, then fly to Norvis, then go to Norvis orbit for refueling works nicely um it gets all the it means it gets the fuel it needs it, it get it, it, it just happen, i happen to do it in that order and it, and it and it works so i haven't changed anything this one however because trellos is such a big planet there isn't enough fuel in all in these tanks to take off from both trellos and norvis without a refuel so what this one does is it it uh, goes from norvis orbit where it refuels then it goes to land on norvis to unload then it flies off to Trellos, and that takes about... When taking off from Norvis, uses up sort of 40% of the uh, fuel in these tanks. And then on Trellos, we're turning the excess oil from the uh, from the core fragment processing here into rocket fuel using this large system of machines over here. And that fills up these tanks down here on both sides of the ship. These get filled up with rocket fuel while the ship's away. And then when the ship lands, we can dump that fuel into the ship in order to give it enough to take off from this planet and fly back to Norvis orbit. Um, and so far, that seems to be working. Um, it's a little bit arbitrary at the moment in that I've just said... Um, I've just ch I'm dumping as much fuel as I can into the ship and then just see seeing what happens. So there is a chance that we might have a balance problem where we're producing the chunks too quickly or the fuel or the rocket fuel too quickly and either these tanks will fill up or these warehouses will fill up i think more likely to be the latter looking at these because these are getting a little bit full so perhaps i need to try and use up a bit more or a bit more oil somehow perhaps by putting in some more machines across here just to generally speed everything up but that said at the moment it is working well enough things seem to be okay um, there's just a risk of the whole thing of, of, of us running out of oil because these machines, uh, these 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 warehouses fill up, everything backs up, and we stop generating oil. So we'll we'll see. And at the moment, it's ticking over okay. I put these tanks in quite recently, which is why they haven't had a chance to fill up yet. But if you look over here, these ones are have a decent amount in them. Um, I should probably wire them all together and find out how much I actually have. In fact, let's do that quickly. There we go. So we've got on this side we've got 360,000. On this side we've got 50,000. So it's a little unbalanced, but that's fine. What does the ship actually carry? It's disappeared off my radar. <laughs> uh, it's gone in. Basically, it's gone off and landed somewhere, so I can't find it. Um, so the ship can hold a total of 600. So at the moment we don't have enough fuel to completely refuel it, but I'm not expecting it to arrive completely empty. And at this point, these t these, this system should not be filling it up completely, because I've, in theory, oh, there it goes again, you see. Um, the plan is that I've set up these numbers to get almost the minimum amount in out of these tanks, so that I can get as much from Trellos as possible. Now, we'll wait, and, and, and as I say, I need to keep an eye on this and make sure I get the numbers about right. Um, if we do start running out of oil here, then I can have it come out with more rocket fuel in its tanks from Norvis and fill it to slightly less full from these tanks. So there is there is a certain amount of space for for playing with it, but I want to try and I, I, I want to, I, I need I need to basically I need to make sure it, it, it's reasonably balanced and that the and, and that the system works essentially. But that seems to be going okay in general. And when the ship comes back, we'll have all, we'll obviously have all those extra lasers we need to finish off this wall around here and uh, and have the place a little bit more protected. But at the moment, it seems to be working. I saw an attack come in earlier and it didn't manage to penetrate, so that's that's a pretty good sign. Another thing I've done while I've been in all all the time I spent on Trellos was I hadn't I explored around inside this um, this pyramid, and uh, this is the third, fourth, something like that one I've explored. And so I came in here expecting it to be a bit of a challenge but actually with the uh, lightning gun with my um, uh, with, with my handful of personal laser defences and all these jetpacks I've got actually I made really really quick work of the biters in here I didn't need didn't need nukes, didn't need anything just went in there with, the, with the, that, that, this and the lightning gun and just completely wrecked them. The, uh, the box here had a tier 9 efficient, no tier Tier 9 efficiency module, I think, which I've gone and stuck in some, somewhere, I think probably on Tulip, but I can't remember exactly. Um, I, I found a vague use for it anyway. The, the uh, efficiency modules are not quite as useful as the rest of them. But that, I think, does means I've now achieved pretty much everything I wanted to on this planetoid. Um, we've got a supply of core fragments coming through. They're, doing, they're coming through pretty quickly. Now, maybe I want to do have things 
maybe I want to double this up a bit, actually. Um, have a second one of these facilities and a second spaceship. Um, or at least a second produce twice as much of the um, the core fragments and the, and, the, and the rocket fuel so I can have two ships running because this this planet is capable of producing a lot more core fragments than it is at the moment where uh, it I've only got four mining drills running on it and it's a big it's a big planet I could I could seriously increase that and the rate would still be quite acceptable from each one so maybe maybe in, at some point in the future I'll expand this but at the moment I think the resources are less of a problem because I've been keeping an eye on it during the um, during play and so here's, here's the uh, the trains emptying out as you can see we're currently very very full of what should I say we're very very full it's not. It, it's running through. This, this is this is the system running running correctly. Actually, the um, it's being held up a little bit by the amount of copper, by the rate the copper can come and the stone and the coal can come through, because those are the things that are being produced in the largest quantities. So, but they are all going into the into all the storage systems over here as fast as possible. The big tell is how much we have in the system. So there's 13,000 and 14,000 of the vulcanite and the uranium. Now, those ones I don't expect to be producing enough to, power, to, to supply everything. So that, that's okay. We're, I don't mind those being low. But if we look down here, we've got 73,000 coal. That's good. We've got 23,000 stone. Now, a train has just left. So that means there is a decent amount of stone here. Um, there is enough stone here for another train to come and collect more. So we're okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. 44,000 copper, that's okay again. 129,000... Oh, and this that reminds me, I need to link this like that. 100, um, 133,000 um, iron. Um, I, I put in an extra set of uh, warehouses here because we had more iron than we could store at one point. So... It, it over it, uh, these these all hit absolute capacity and it was causing problems so I put in some more warehouses along the bottom here and linked it in as you can as you can see and that has solved the problem for now because now there's twice as much storage space if we're still producing iron faster than we're using it then it may may become a problem again later but you know we'll work with it while we can the problem may well be the, the sheer rate I've been producing uh, producing modules at has been ri absolutely ripping through copper because I've been producing enormous quantities of circuits that might be why the copper is is a bit low compared to um, and, and probably the stone as well actually because that goes into the glass and the and the, um, and the stone slabs for circuits um, compared to the iron which isn't used so much um, but you know resources are there to be used and uh, so if, if it runs out I just need to find ways of balancing the supply and keep it making it come in faster and with copper that's pretty much done because we've got these these unloads from coming from um, gear often which is this solid belt of well, solid belt of um, copper with occasional stone in it that's coming out here, and that's keeping the um, the copper supply nice and topped up. And we have a system where the ship will only come in from gear often if there's a shortage of copper. So it worked. So it's keeping the copper topped up quite nicely. Um, otherwise, yeah, down here you can see the the um, the glass is the glass smelting is running flat out. We've got 63,000 though, so it it is keeping up apparently. Um, and the stone unloading is going as, as appropriate because of that. Steel has stopped, bricks have stopped, iron has stopped, and um, copper has stopped. So all the rest of them are are absolutely fine. So this is, I'd say, this is all going pretty well. We just need to keep an eye, a bit of an eye on the glass to make sure everything's happy down here. Maybe I should put the productivity modules back in actually because I, I took them out because we had an excess of stone, but now we don't. So I think. Probably putting the yeah putting the productivity modules back in these things would be a good idea. That's the thing I can do from do remotely actually because I've got the um yeah that's cool. No, there's a sixes. Let's just drop them down to threes because threes are cheap. Okay, so with this with this with this mod and uh, the module inserter, you can remotely add uh, modules to machines like this and this. And now the um the construction bots are oh, in this as well. Oh, um, they're apparently. I don't seem to have it programmed for the air crushers as well. Let's. Uh, although actually, I haven't moduled these crushers either. Let's, um, oh, they're, they're the same thing. Um, I should probably should though. So again, I can go in here with the module inserter. I can find the crushers, which is that one, pulverizer rather, and get that one upgraded as well. So now, if I get the module inserter, drag it across here. Um, they're not being not, not being moduled. I don't know why not. Let's do these ones as well, though. Okay. Yeah, pulverizers. Hmm. 
I don't know. I don't know why that's not working, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. We should have... Yes, there's a flood of the um, flood of the uh, ro uh, construction bots now, flying flying over and stopping to recharge as is their way. But they'll bring down productivity modules for all of this, and that will massively boost the amount of glass I'm getting out for the amount of stone. And that, in 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 turn, will reduce the amount of stone that we're getting through here. So hopefully that'll be able to keep up a little bit better. Now, as you can see, another train is on its way, um, but we're only up to thirty-five thousand, which isn't isn't actually two trains. So. By the time the tra by the time the train's arrived and gone again, we'll probably be just over. But oh dear, we've got a, a snarl here. Oh, why has this happened? Because there isn't enough room to get out of. Right, okay. So if we put in another signal here and here, I suppose, then that'll fix that problem. Actually, here would be a better place. Let's do that. So that'll, that will then allow this train to get in, into here. But what I should actually be doing is setting this to have a train limit of one. Uh, that one. Train limit of one. And that means it will never have two trains trying to come into this station at the same time. Um, but in the, in the short term, having that signal in there will allow this train to pull in a bit further, which will allow that one to go, which will allow that one to go... And so on. Where's that one trying to get to? Oh, that one's trying to get Vulcanite as well. That's a problem. Um, okay, you go back to the depot because clearly things have gone horribly wrong. Okay, you can go down that way if you want. I don't care. Which allows that one to go and this one to go. And this is where I find out this one's trying to get in here. Nope, that's all right. We seem, this seems to have... God, there's a lot of trains trapped in this area, though. But this has now allowed them to start flowing again a bit more acceptably. So let's keep an eye on it for a minute or two longer, and hopefully we'll find that everything now just works, TM. Also, there's not very much... Is there not very much Vulcanite? Oh, there's 120,000 Vulcanite here. That's that's probably okay. All right. I just think I just noticed there wasn't any on the belts. I was thinking, why is this train stopped? What's going? Well, why is this spaceship not here? What's going on? But it's probably all right. Okay, so that's cleared that problem out. Good. So what else? What else have I been up to apart from fiddling with things on Trellos? Well, that's been most of it actually. Um, I did also actually worth worth mentioning is I put in this system down here, which is requesting um, the. Uh, what do you call it? A meteorite defense ammo, and then loading them onto the back of the spaceship. And so, in this, this means they can be taken off to planets where there's a uh, meteorite defense guns that need ammunition, <clears throat> like, and that where they can then be unloaded, as you see here, from here into this chest. Except this chest is already full, so it doesn't need to. But yeah, um, and then that'll keep this this system up and running and loaded. Now, as you can see, the uh, the robots are now placing all of the laser turrets from the uh, that have been brought out here. So these the defenses here are getting. Fin improved and set up and finished up, up and so on. We're pumping all of the oil out of these tanks and out of these tanks to refuel the ship, which is going quite well. The trains have zipped round and are already ready to launch again. Um, are already ready for the ship to sh spaceship to leave, but we're still waiting for the fuel to come in because we've only got 470,000 and we're waiting for 550 to make sure we've got plenty to take off from Trellos and then we're not and that we're not bringing too much back at the other end. What I think I need to do, what I think I need to have is the fuel coming through a bit faster from up here, and use the bigger tanks down here so that these tanks can be filled up a lot more quickly, and then think and then I think this system will work a bit more neatly and a bit more nicely. But until then, we'll just we'll, worry, we'll just leave it running as is because as you can see, the trains have filled up again already. That's how that's how quick and efficient the train train based system is. It's just a shame that. The, uh, the ship isn't ready yet. But we'll see this one go again in a minute or two. I've also done a couple of little fixes out in Realm of Shadows. We had another, tr we had a train jam out here as well in this sort of area, which I fixed by put basically by putting some signals on a um, on a spaceship that's coming out here and sticking in a robo port, and then just using the bots to fix it up for me. So that's worked quite nicely. Um, this looks to be working pretty well. All of these uh, crushers are going. Obviously, we're working as fast as they can because the uh, the belts leading up to them are all full, so that's good. We've got a, a trickle, so that means we've got this trickle of um, 
Naquim coming out, sorry, crushed Naquitite coming out here. That's going into the uh, into the warehouses here. And the first warehouse is full, second warehouse is nearly full. That means we're ready for another ship to arrive. Um, that's going to be a while though, because there isn't one even on its way out. So we seem to be getting a bit of us ahead of ourselves here. Maybe that means it's time to make some more of these ships. But I'll need to look into the rest of the Naquim processing and see where the bottlenecks are in that. And I think that's going to be a job for another time. I've uh, I've waffled on for long enough now. So thank you for watching. Um, this as uh, hopefully next week I'll be a bit more on form and I'll get a bit more done. We'll make some a bit more bit more progress rather than me just get ble blearily looking at the screen and and trying to and running back and forth uh, fighting fires. So come along on uh, on Wednesday to see if that see if I'm telling the truth about that, um, and come along on Monday as well to see the uh, the Minecraft stream where we'll be running through the um, uh, a bit more of Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles. I've been messing around with some um, blood magic recently, and there's some interesting automation coming up. I think where I'm going to try and get some sort of uh, a system of um, pipes and item ducts and things that will allow me to um, automate making the next stage in this process, rather than trying to trying to make the absolute bajillion things I need items I need in order to do so by hand, because that way lies madness. So yes, come along and join uh, join me for that. I think it should be a should be a good stream. I don't think we've got any sort of horrible um, dangerous things planned this time, but knowing knowing my uh, friends, the the chances are we'll find something to, something to, that'll end up with me getting killed. But we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I'll, hopefully there'll be the GTA videos will start up again. I missed one last week because I just didn't she simply didn't have the time to make the video. Um, but maybe next week well there'll be there'll be one. We'll see. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.